I'm finally able to respond to Bob the Science Guy, who was really nice to me, by the way. He called me princess and then queen of flat earth, so that was nice of you. Thanks, Bob. He asked me to respond to his contention that on our Monterey Bay experiment, he looked at the photos and couldn't find the houses along the shoreline, meaning he feels that that proves a globe. Um, honestly, Bob, first of all, we're going to go over everything because we did find the houses, so that's coming up. But um, if your only proof of globe is a blurry picture, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's, that's not really proof. So let's get right into it. Also, before I start really fast, this gyroscope thing, everyone, it's just such old news. I guess Bob did a video on it. If everything relative to Earth is motionless, then the gyroscope shouldn't be measuring any motion. Old news, okay, next, moving on. First of all, I wanna make a disclaimer that I did use the wrong picture in my original video. Big mistake, I should have been more careful. Um, however, that's okay, we're gonna go over it all right now. Because the thing is that if you go back in this video to about eight minutes and 30 seconds, you're going to see that there was actually a giant sand dune in the way of the houses so you have to remember that you know there's things in between us and these towers and there's the sand dune right there so actually if nathan's camera was on the beach level 14 miles away he would have seen what i'm seeing right here on the other shore which is a giant sand dune blocking the uh, image of all those houses so the only way that we can actually see those houses and boats would be if nathan was standing up on top, uh, 20 feet up on the beach cliff, up, up on the stairs. But do you see how in this drawing, the arrow is actually going through the sand dune a little bit? Because we don't actually know how tall that sand dune was. We didn't measure it. We were just in a panic to do everything else that day. But believe me, we will measure it if we go back there and try to get you those house photos. Um, so. Yes, there still may be some cut off on the bottom due to the sand dune, even if we're standing on the cliff. We're not sure because we didn't measure that sand dune. So just remember initially, it's not like we were photographing houses right on the shoreline like I did over at Salton Sea, of which science has had no response to yet because I clearly captured everything on the other side of the Salton Sea about 10 miles away. No response to that from science yet at all. But over at Monterey, these houses weren't on the seashore like they were at Salton. We are shooting through landmass objects and things, including this giant sand dune. I actually mentioned it on camera to Nathan that day, but I didn't think the sand dune would be important because it wasn't between what we thought was important. Nathan and the mirror. The mirror is what we were concentrating on. I'm going to show you some footage of the day of of the dune and how I forgot to get altitude. I guess I was going to, but I just didn't really care that much because the mirror was the exciting part. And then I'm going to prove to you that if you're seeing anything chopped off in the photos, it is definitely the dune chopping it off because of a fallacy in your thinking. Before I show you the fallacy in your thinking, I want you to see that there are distortions on the horizon. I did this by placing the image which was taken up close over the image from 14.5 miles away because that's how far the stacks were and then making it a little bit transparent and you can see that the stacks don't match at all. The towers are way bigger but I actually did this by matching up the building the front of the building right here because I was searching for the buildings that you said were missing and even though this part matches the 
the stacks don't. What does that mean? That means that the water in the atmosphere is magnifying and distorting things, just like it'll eventually block your view, like a big giant wall of water. It gets too thick. We, that's why we can't see too far. Now check out the area where the tree is blocking the building right here. And then when you fade down, it's so tiny. It's real, real small. That means the whole area is being compressed and those little houses in that blur are probably very tiny as well. It's just a completely different bear than what you're looking for. And don't forget, it's also taken from a slightly different angle. Here's the fallacy in your thinking. So you know that we captured a rectangular flash from our mirror. So I believe what you're trying to tell me is that the flash from the mirror, light can bend somehow. I find it interesting that you always say that light can bend when you want it to bend and it can't bend when it can't bend. So, you know, science says the light can't bend, but whatever, when we're talking about the globe, suddenly it bends. So the light from the mirror bent around the globe, supposedly, got straight to our cameras, and yet the houses didn't? See, that doesn't even make sense because the light bouncing off the mirror reaching our camera in a square, I mean a rectangular formation no less, so it was the mirror we were looking at, which means that the light bouncing off the houses should have also bent around the globe. So you can't have it both ways. You can't have the light from the mirror being bent by gravity, but not the light bouncing off the houses being bent by gravity. You might claim that the mirror was bouncing out and somehow getting bigger than the light from bouncing off the houses, but that doesn't make sense either. Not only because we caught the rectangular shape right before it does that and turns into a big circle, um, but also because the light bouncing off the houses should grow um, as much as anything else. Any light coming towards us should be growing and bending in the same fashion unless you're trying to tell me that certain light is different from other light, which is, you know what, probably what y'all are going to do to try to lie to cover this up. As of now, here's a little list for you of reasons to pick from that might explain away why you can't see your houses, yet you can see our mirror, because you actually do need an explanation now as to why you can't see the houses. Not only that, but Nathan called me one night with a very clear photo and said, he feels that he can see a lot of the things on the other side, like the houses and definitely the spires of the boats. So we've spent some time pouring over it. I zoomed on in and I outlined the shapes, which are not natural shapes, you know, just um, outlined, say like a straight line here and there. And yeah, it's starting to look like houses popping out of the blur there. Here you can see I'm tracing the shape of what looks like a roof. It is a somewhat irregular roof, but that's okay. As you're gonna see later on, there's actually two possibilities for what the building that this roof might belong to. And I'll present both. At first I was thinking that this house was the same as this house that Nathan found because of the tree behind it. Uh, but there's actually another tree to the left. And after outlining the irregularities in the roof. It didn't quite match the irregularities in the roof of the brown and white one. The thing is the brown building is more directly in front of the um, building behind it, which makes it seem like we're looking at the brown building here, the brown and tan building, um, but was shot, the pink one was shot at a different angle. When I traced it, the roof line actually looked more like the ones on the left. Uh, the two blue ones but what we're clear on is that we are seeing a building here these are unnatural lines and Bob the scientist said that no buildings could be seen at all but yet we are very clearly seeing buildings and trees on the other side I just want to remind you that this is 14.5 miles away because we're actually filming something that's back from the beach so not even at the beach itself which was something like 13.7 miles away where our mirror was so I put this into the um, really bunk as heck uh, earth curve calculator. And we're looking at a supposed hidden height of 35.55 feet, but you know, three to almost four story building. And yet we're about to show that you can see the spires of the boats that are sitting straight on the water. Um, these boats are on the water level 
and their spires have got to be only like 20, 40 foot high. But I can definitely see why you thought a little bit was shaved off the bottom, but it's definitely not 40 feet like you thought. It's more like maybe 10, you know, a few RVs here and there are gone. And if you're missing a little bit on the bottom here or there, it's not because of curvature of the earth. And please do not think that I'm saying this because I have some sort of vendetta to be a flat earther. I actually just think earth is flat. And if you can prove it's a globe or a much larger globe than I was taught, then by all means prove it to me because I actually was going to go on a little rant against flat earthers here in this video, but I decided to refrain from this little video and do its own special little video for a time when I'm especially riled up. There's a lot of things about a lot of flat earthers and the things that they say and believe in that are ridiculous, I can easily disprove, and really drive me insane and insult me. So please just don't lump me in with the other flat earthers. Um, I have nothing against you proving that this is a globe, and if you can do it, do it. But in my mind, you and all the other people that thought you proved globe with a few lack of a few houses, uh, this wasn't it. Just wasn't it, Bob. Okay, now I'd like to play a game where you respond to me because I have plenty of unanswered questions that have gone unanswered by science completely and everybody's ignoring it. Here, let's go. Number one, how do you explain away that I captured a perfect image of every single thing on the other side of the Salton Sea from only two feet above sand level? Number two, how do you explain that your earth curve calculators don't work as I destroyed them in this documentary? Not one scientist has touched it because this image should either be 35 feet under the curve or more like 65 feet under the curve. Number three, as informed to me by Angel, how is it that the light on the earth changes because the sun is revolving around it, but it doesn't change at the same rate on the moon. In other words, if the sun is going around us, both the earth and the moon, then shouldn't the light be changing on the moon as well? But yet we see it looking the same in the night sky all the time. Number four, please explain to me why on the Salton Sea, if our lasers were pointed straight up in the air, the source of the laser was a big bright ball, no concavity at all from any kind of earth curvature or earth shadow in the way at all and then why did the lasers present to us a giant circle when we stared straight down the barrel also with no earth curvature or earth shadow in the way of that beam that we were looking straight down the barrel so far science has had absolutely no response to anything in that documentary i did on the salton sea last but not least Please, please get that IIG West to give us their footage because since I did that experiment with them, did you know what? They haven't given me one lick of footage. I have never been able to analyze their footage. So you want to talk about our side because we're giving you everything we have. We even put it in folders for you online to rip apart. Where's your team's footage? Get it over to us so we can analyze it. Thanks.